some scary movie. You like scary movies? Uh huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Look at me, Damien. It's all for you. Hello, Mommy. Hello. We all go a little mad sometimes. Hello and welcome to a lovely episode of All Things Horror. I am your host Ben and I'm joined here with my co-host Matt. If you're new to the show, each week we choose a movie to break down and review. We give our honest opinions and rate it from 1 to 10. We have a brief spoiler-free chat about the movie before we head into the plot and discuss our favourite and least favourite parts of the movie. Uh, if you stick around to the end, we finish off with some interesting trivia and a fun game and... Uh, As it's Valentine's Day, we've found it fitting to discuss the 1981 slasher, My Bloody Valentine. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at the trailer. It's a bad time, this time of year. How many times is he going to tell this story? I'll let him tell it. I love fairy tales. This ain't no fairy tale, little girl. If you don't take it seriously, you're a fool! (laughs) The first Valentine's dance in 20 years has to be something special. Look, Flanders, you've got to get a lot of exercise if you're going to grapple with Gretchen. Oh, yeah? Well, I got a valentine for her that she's never going to forget. Right to the heart, huh? In this town on Valentine's Day, everybody loses their heart. Roses are red, violets are blue. One is dead, and so are you. Bluffs. It looks like Harry Warden's back in town. It happened once. It happened twice. Cancel the dancer, it'll happen twice. In the town of Valentine Bluffs, there are many ways to die. Take your pick. My bloody Valentine. When a Valentine's Day event results in the death of minors, a lone survivor, Harry Warden, returns to seek revenge 20 years later when the celebration is resumed. Uh, Director is George (laughs) Mihalka. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I think George Mahalka. Yeah. Mahalka. Yeah. I was saying this to my wife the other day. Like, all the episodes we've done now, I think this must be like episode 34. I don't think we've done a single episode where I haven't butchered someone's name. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to start like <laughs> looking up how to. You, you haven't got like um, a really long, complicated name yourself. Yeah. Otherwise, <laughs> <laughs> just Ben. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. Can not everybody not be called Ben? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah, George Mihalka. Um, And the main cast is Neil Affleck, Paul Kelman, and Laurie Hallier. Hallier. Uh, Runtime of hour and 30 minutes. And, yeah, I don't think there's any way you can watch it free, but I'm sure you can rent it on Amazon Prime or YouTube. Yep. I watched Um, it on on Amazon Prime. Um, It turns out I didn't have a copy of it. I thought I did. I've definitely seen it before a couple of times, hmm. um, but yeah, I thought I owned it, but I didn't. 
Um, Because I do like Canada as place, just Mm. like the idea of Canada. I like Canadian things. (laughs) Like Alan Partridge is that friend who likes American things. (laughs) But um, I I do like, I just like, I like the, the, the feel of Canada. I like the... The, the sort of the, the snow and the people are polite and there's a lot of my favorite comedians and actors and films so like yeah mm. it's um i like the idea of i've always liked the idea of this film probably more than i actually like the film <laughs> mm. i'll tell you what like this was a this was a first watch for me and i've got to say i, I actually really enjoyed it there's something i think i might have said this last week but there's something about finding like a an old kind of classic horror that you've not seen before and watching it now for the first time it kind of like takes me back to when i was younger and i'm discovering these types of films for the first time watching it with fresh eyes i do like watching yeah finding new new newish ones or ones sort of mid 80s late 70s Mm. um even now i suppose i'm moving more towards having nostalgia for things from the 90s as well now Mm. um but yeah um it's 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 great this because it once you start looking at the people like the people aren't famous people who made it or anything mm. um neither the actors or everybody it, it's become an iconic character like you do see people like we laughed last week about um people dressing up as characters from wrong turn like putting on a <laughs> tank top or whatever <laughs> um but like this is people do dress up as the minor from this um it's a great film it does have some minor problems oh um, <laughs> um but yeah uh, like when i started going down the thing i was like oh this is just nostalgia fest like the director he hasn't done really anything else other than like tv movies and stuff Mm. but he directed the mr t um the mr t series um not 18 but like a mr t series i don't know what it was whether it's a cartoon or something and the writer produced magnum pi and airwolf so i'm like okay this is this is awesome. There's largely unknown people, though, isn't it? Which I like it because it feels like they're really from that Canadian. Well, they probably are, but really are from that Canadian um, town. And mm. also, it is like Canada not pretending to be America. It actually is Canada. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it's, it's always been on my radar. So, well, I mean, especially around this time of it being Valentine's Day, it tends to pop up more and i think we've said this you know like holiday themed horror films like black christmas was 74 halloween was 78 friday the 13th was 80 and then this one followed straight off the back of that in 1981 yeah and then there's like lesser successful ones but they have like a big cult following like prom night and april fool's day and god knows how many christmas ones it's like do do you reckon like films like that they they kind of give it more of a boost than what they would have had like do you think the fact that i don't know friday the 13th is so popular because it is friday the 13th so people watch it on friday the 13th same same as halloween mm. yeah w- would friday the 13th be as popular as it was if it was just called crystal lake and would halloween be as popular as it was if it was just called michael myers yeah and i think they did i think some of them did have different names and they literally did change them retrospectively Hmm. to to fit in with a certain time but like no so i think it's a good question but like also i suppose when you look at it there are certain um ones that are crying out for a bit of attention like thanksgiving like Mm. just came out and people were like oh finally like i mean there are a couple there's blood rage and things like that but actually called thanksgiving and with like a pilgrim as the the killer and what have you Mm. um so like if it's essential to the story but yeah i don't know i mean i don't like i I quite like the idea of of doing that because it's a good way of getting people into the cinema it feels like an event doesn't it yeah yeah, um and, and and like there's only really now Marvel and Disney, big Disney things that do that to make it feel like an event. So horror, that's why horror is one of the still getting people into the cinema, I think, is because you can go, oh, I'll go and watch something on Halloween. I'll watch Halloween at Halloween or yeah. um, th- this will come out on a Friday the 13th or this will come out on a Thanksgiving. Like, So in a way, it's the way that they've stayed alive 
<laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what so, they haven't done, though. They haven't done an Easter film. They should do like a no. killer Easter bunny. <laughs> well, I, I've written a script for a pancake day um, slasher. <laughs> so, um, and I won, a, I won a, well, I kind of won an award. I got an official selection for it in um, a film festival. So wow. um, I haven't made thing. the film because it's only, it's only about six pages. But um, oh, I'm sure yeah. it would be flipping great. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Wow. Well, um, in this film, here I'm going to do another one. In this film, he he shouldn't have been having relations with her in the first place because he's a minor. <laughs> oh <laughs> um, dear. So yeah, I did think of that one. I wrote that one down. How many um, times can we do this? <laughs> <laughs> well, all minor related to minor. Um, I, th- I think I actually did make some kind of like minor. Um, <laughs> just a minor note. joke. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah um, it's weird that there wasn't like seven of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the uh, remake. Did you have you seen the remake? I, I probably I watched a bit of the remake because what year was that? That was two thousand and nine. But um, I really didn't like that because it was three D, and I cannot stand three D movies. Yeah, I can't because I can't see them because yeah. I only have one working eye, so it doesn't really work for me. <laughs> well, that's one of them films where it properly like acted on the 3D aspect of it, and they they did it both as a normal 3D film and like a normal um, just standard film. But you can tell how hard they went for it because it's constantly like pickaxes coming straight towards the camera and stuff. And I don't know, I think. I think 3D films are quite tacky and it makes for really poor kind of like camera work and stuff because there's only so much you can do, really. I think I watched one good one. I can't remember what it was. I put my contact lenses in and I got the proper glasses for my TV and I, it was back when I had a 3D TV, which I don't know. And um, I can't remember what it was. It might have been the first Guardians of the Galaxy or something. I was like, oh, this is good. But I don't think I've ever had a particularly good 3D experience in the cinema. Mm, yeah, um, yeah, same. Yeah, so, well, then again, it's really difficult, like I say, because it's not set up for me. <laughs> it just, just, doesn't work for me. I, I'm, I'm happy just to be able to see full stop. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it just feels like showing off. Yeah. Um, oh, the, the the other interesting thing about this is that talking about things that, you know, we love and have, like, um, an affection for is that um, Axel, um, he went on to animate Simpsons during the actual, like, massive classic simpsons era oh, um, okay. to the guy who plays axel i can't remember what his name is uh, as an actor but like neil Affleck. I think that's, that's so cool yeah yeah all oh, right oh that's interesting oh the the character there's a character that i'm probably not going to mention that much but i actually really appreciate him and i want a bit of love for this guy so it's mike played by tom kovacs he's like the big chunky guy oh i did like him yeah yeah, yeah, I think he's really cool because he breaks up fights, he calms everyone down, yeah. he tries to help out. He's like the opposite of toxic masculinity in a film made in 1981 yeah. in, in, a, in a, like a tough town. He's like one of those tough guys who doesn't have to walk around telling everybody he's tough. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he's not a manic miner. Um, <laughs> but like, um, yeah, it's... It, it, it's it, he's a really good character he's probably my favorite character in the film when he well when things happen to him i was a bit disappointed mm-hmm. but um yeah it's it, it is it is a good it is a like a, a quite um a good approach because obviously there's the the heart in the box as well in the candy box mm-hmm. so like there's a lot of iconography that fits with it it's, it's not like they could have called it something else Mm. And yeah, it, yeah. It fit, yeah. everything kind of fits. Um, and obviously, it's the event that's happening at the the place. I like the set. Well, I like I like the whole place. It's a bit different, isn't it? Having it in like a Canadian town rather than mm. the same mm. old. I'll tell you what. It it really reminded me of. Um, I was getting vibes of like the burning. Have you seen that? Yeah, because yeah. that was uh, that was the same year. These both came out in eighty one. Both slashers. Both got quite a good cult following. Similar premise, you know. It's it's about a killer taking revenge for what happened to him, and just the overall feel of it was very gritty with a typical early eighties slasher. I don't know. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like it's no, I do, and 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 I think as well they were all kind of based on a lot of real life. Like the Cropsey thing is a real life legend, isn't it? And then that's kind of influenced, also influenced Friday the 13th, hmm. um, as well as The Burning, obviously. So, like, it's all kind of happened. Obviously, 
I suppose the most original one is Halloween. Um, so there's some similarities, mm. groups of kids and da da da. Um, but that, I guess in this one, it's probably more the because th- of the time period and what they're wearing and what they're like. Because it's this is in like a snowy village, isn't it? And like the mm. burning's like another lake based one. Yeah, but I, yeah. I get what you're saying. It's like I suppose it's because it stands out the, the way they look and the way they dress and the things they say and the group of people are actually more real normal people looking like the burning mm. like whereas friday the 13th and continued to end that way go that way was like stunning looking people <laughs> gradually getting more and more beautiful as the series went on and wearing less and less clothes <laughs> um, yeah i mean speaking of the burning and friday the 13th the, the burning and this one neither of them were, were really received very well um do you think that's because of friday the 13th um i think that even friday the 13th wasn't well received and halloween wasn't well received i think like people have always looked down on horror it's but, only that the fans go and watch them yeah but like budget wise because oh, yeah. I'm, I'm just looking at the bu- um like box office and budgets like the the bu- the budget for this one was two and a half mil, mm. and it made a box office of just shy of six mil. But Friday the Thirteenth that only had a half mil budget, and that went on to make um, sixty mil. Yeah, and that might be to do with the production company because I think there's a bigger production company behind Friday the Thirteenth making it relatively cheap and them putting it in tons of cinemas right. whereas i think that this being a canadian film it took its time to kind of make it to cinemas and maybe didn't have as wide a release oh i see um so i think there's a lot of that i think that the the, the reason there's so many friday the 13th well what, what people have said or what, what i've read is that, that they're so cheap to make that the, these big production companies kind of use them as a kind of almost like their dirty little secret mm. throw a small amount of money at them and get a massive amount of return mm. um yeah. so and friday the 13th being the best example of that because because like halloween has been all over the place hasn't it with different people buying it and mm. and different people behind it and gaps of time but friday the 13th for a certain period of time every couple of years making tons of money yeah, even, when, even yeah. ones that weren't, even the ones that weren't doing that well, still like compared to some of the other ones, were still doing really well compared to other movies. Um, I think it's just all about, um, like I say, it's all about the amount of cinemas that they can get them out onto, and which company you're kind of linked in with. Mm. So it's a shame because this isn't a bad film at all. I, I, don't, I don't think it's my favourite Canadian, like kind of exploitation film, but it's. It, it's iconic from the character. Um, I do like Black Christmas. Black Christmas is one of my favourite films. And actually, I think, do you know, um, I think The Burning is actually counted as a Canadian. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know whether whether that's because of it was distributed in Ameri- in, in Canada, because it it's in New York, isn't it? It's, it's um, like a New York camp thing. But when you look on a lot of lists, and if you type in Canucks exploitation for some reason the burning comes up in that list so maybe there's something behind it or whatever mm. but, yeah, um, yeah yeah it's a strange one because it's definitely right. it's definitely american it's like it's like um sleepaway camp almost where you know it's like the outskirts of new york on these sort of summer camps because they're very famous for those aren't they? i suppose and, and friday the 13th mm. yeah, but, yeah. Uh, sleep sleepaway camp is another example of like a one that nobody gave any good reviews to but people went out and watched it and loved it mm, yeah all right uh yeah that's pretty much all i've really got i mean other than uh rotten tomatoes it's kind of leveled out with both the critics audience they're both in the uh the 50s range um critics are 58 and audience is 52 so it's um thingy yeah. as well isn't it it's the um it, it, it's 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 quite creative in terms of the kills of creative as we go along, as mm. we'll, we'll, we'll talk about largely unknown people. Mm, um, yeah, yeah. But it makes so much, it's probably, it's probably, I mean, Cronenberg's Canadian, but you wouldn't talk cause he's, he's a kind of almost, I don't know, before people start saying elevated horror, like Cronenberg's kind of seen as a bit higher up, isn't he? Than 
like mm. he gets all the awards for cr- creativity and stuff but like this is i'm just so shocked that this never became a franchise it must have just been a case of it it didn't have the money behind it that people you know push for that yeah, yeah. stranger or maybe it just became more popular as they went along Hmm, interesting. Over time, things are remembered better, aren't they? Sometimes than. I'm kind of glad it didn't, though, in a way. Mm. Well, there's not like twelve of them. Yeah, because <laughs> it, it, sometimes it can ruin it, can't it? I'm oh not, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how many like sleepaway camps they've done, or you know, stuff yeah, like that. But three, well, three and a half, kind of. Three and a half. Yeah, <laughs> three and a half. So the fourth one is like a combination of bits that they used before they, they didn't use, and a new story. And it didn't quite get finished properly, oh, okay. but the, yeah. So uh, there's really this three. Yeah, <laughs> just like slashes in general, they just tend to. I mean, well, look, look at Friday the Thirteenth. They've they've done eleven. Uh, Is it ten yeah. or eleven? Yeah, Same it's with um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, they all. Yeah, yeah. This is, is a perfect is sort of time as well, isn't it? Mm, yeah. One hour, thir- one hour thirty minutes. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Right, cool. Uh, should we jump into the plot and start spoiling it? Yeah. Should we? And start ruining it. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler warning. <laughs> right, so this movie starts off inside a mine, um, and a sexy female miner strips off for another miner. And starts weirdly like feeling up his gear, <laughs> and uh, but he was having none of it, and he kills her by pushing her onto a pickaxe. That's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I just want to say really quickly, like right at this point, I kind of rolled my eyes and immediately expected this to be a really cheesy kind of tongue-in-cheek slasher. <laughs> I, I was know, like, oh, nice, is this how it's going to be? All right. I think a lot of the Canadian ones are quite dark, aren't they? Like yeah. Black Christmas is quite dark and creepy this is quite dark. i think as well because the weather's quite miserable too mm. it's not it's not like it's full of sun and sea and yeah all that kind of stuff it's quite grim yeah the mayor of the town mayor hanniger Han- i don't know the mayor uh <laughs> he reinstates the traditional valentine's day dance which had been suspended for 20 years uh, he and the police chief, Jake Newby, receive an anonymous box of Valentine's chocolates, but to their surprise, it was in fact containing a human heart with a <laughs> note warning <laughs> that murders will begin if the dance proceeds. I'm just going to say this right here. Once this happens once, they need to stop sending people chocolates in heart-shaped boxes. Once that it's out that this is happening... You're gonna just gonna even if you've put chocolates in it, you're just gonna freak out your other half or your friend <laughs> or your neighbour. Like, but they just seem to never get tired of doing this, regardless of how many body parts are found in these boxes. They're like, oh, maybe it's some nice chocolates. Oh, I've got a great idea. I'll send them some chocolates in a heart shaped box. No, once it happens once, people are gonna remember it because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's, it's a bit strange. Why do we keep persisting with these heart shaped boxes? Is it just in this town? There's like a heart shaped box factory. Everyone's just cranking them out. <laughs> That's all I've got to say about that. I'm just not happy about it. <laughs> okay, all right. Minus half a point for heart shaped boxes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No mention of Nirvana, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... There's a caption near the beginning that says uh, the date is Thursday the 12th of February, indicating that the dance is going to be on Saturday the 14th. So that means technically Friday the 13th is in the middle. (laughs) (laughs) So we then see everyone hanging out at the bar and the creepy barman gives us a history lesson. Oh shit, here we go again. (laughs) <laughs> so the dance stopped 20 years ago because there was an accident where two supervisors left the miners in the mine so they could attend the Valentine's Day dance. Priorities. But, yep. But they didn't check the gas levels in the tunnel, which caused an explosion. Harry Warden was the only survivor who resorted to cannibalism to survive and then went insane from it, because you would. Uh the following year, he murdered the two supervisors, cutting out their hearts and putting them into Valentine's Day boxes with a note 
warn in the town never to hold the Valentine's Day dance again or he will commit more killings. He doesn't like dancing. It's like Footloose. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was now where I was really kind of getting into it. I was like, oh, okay, all right, this is, this is picking up now. The story's getting good. I, I think it's a really good story so far anyway, and uh, I really liked that backstory of how um, the killer became how he is. Because a lot of films, especially slashes, it's like, uh, okay, that's that's how the killer. Like Friday the Foot, <laughs> I'm a slasher now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the boy in the lake drowned, and he and then he come back. He was like, oh, okay, all right. But no, th- this one, like, it's it's legit a real kind of man. I don't know, was Cropsey a real man? Yeah. Yeah, just a, yeah, struggling a bit. Yeah, burnt. <laughs> a bit crispy. A bit crispy, but not yeah. Generally, a man. Yeah, but no, this one is just a genuine psychopath. You know, he just went insane from resulting to turn into a cannibal. So, yeah, I like it. I think I think it's a good kind of premise that sets up who the killer is and what he's all about. Oh, insane in the membrane! <laughs> so, yeah, we, we also meet the whole group. Um, it's not really worth getting into them. They're all kind of like throwaway characters. You get the main three, the Sarah, Axel, and TJ, because they got some kind of like tense love triangle going on. But, yeah, um, I, got, I love, I love, um, I love isosceles going on. Yeah, and you've got, um, you got Mike, your favourite. Forget Mike. Yeah, Mike's <laughs> a legend. Yeah. Um, here's some early trivia. Big bear of a man. <laughs> so this this was uh this was filmed in real mines but they had to be careful how they used a lot of their lightings because there was the actual potential danger of methane explosions so i thought that was yeah. I don't really think it's about the same it. here yeah same here <laughs> I also, sometimes have to edit you sometimes have to edit them out of the uh, podcast <laughs> sometimes <laughs> mostly <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that evening, um, the geared up killer uh, kills resident Mabel, and her heart is removed. Um, <laughs> Mabel, Mabel, <laughs> poor old Mabel. Uh, newbie contacts the mental institution where Harry Warden was incarcerated, but they have no records of him. Uh, Hanager and newbie cancel the dance, but. Um, but the youngsters decide to have a party at the mine. Like you do. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. Yeah. Uh, the barman... <laughs> the barman warns them... Um, yeah, the barman warns them and he sets up a dummy miner to scare the group, but he's killed by the real deal when he's testing it. Sounds like my me when I'm not had my inhaler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he tested the shit out of that dummy. He must have tried it like four or five times. He was like, "Yep, it works. Let's try it again. <laughs> yep, still works. <laughs> one more time." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's there's a line from one of the girls. I think she's called Patty. Um, around this time, I can't remember where it is, but I found it quite funny. She's talking to Sarah, and she and she literally says. Besides, you gotta see the dress I bought. It's cut down here, slit up to there. I may not get out alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite a line reading that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, we see him at the party, um, and then the miner brutally kills Dave by dunking his head into boiling hot dog water. Hot dogs seem to turn up a lot in the... I suppose that's like a camp thing, but also this bar is obsessed with hot dogs. They make a lot of hot dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a hot dog, though. I like, I like a good hot dog. I love what a do you What dog. do you have on your hot dog? Uh, ketchup and mustard. Ketchup and mustard. Yeah. yeah. Do you like... Don't mind um, some onions. Do you have crispy onions, yeah? Yeah. Or, or, but what about boiled onions? But, no, I like them crispy. Crispy, crispy. onions... Ketchup and um, uh, Would you have sauerkraut on there if it was like a big frankfurter? Sauerkraut? Yeah, like cabbage like pickled cabbage, spicy. Oh, nah, yeah, nah, I'm nice not man. I'm not a lover of that. <laughs> Check it out, man. 
Um, just everybody who's watching, just spam Ben with sauerkraut. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's nice, man. Um. Yeah, his heart is then found when some of the girls go to get something to eat. They go to get some hot dogs, stirring them around, and they pick his heart hungry. out. Still hungry. <laughs> hungry <laughs> well, for eating hearts now. <laughs> what about heart? You ever eaten a heart? <laughs> um, I have cut hearts up and minced hearts when I was a butcher. Yeah. I think yeah. lamb's heart, that's a thing, isn't it? I've took lamb's hearts out, yeah. We used to call them plucks. So you have all the major organs on like a little, all stuck together. You get them called a pluck, and then you just pluck each bit off, <laughs> and then like free, um, what do you call it? Not freeze them. What's it called? Where you um, vacuum pack? Oh, okay. Them. Yeah. Um, mm. I've never ate one. I don't think. Not knowingly. No, I've never, I've never eaten heart. But I know my granddad and my brother. They were really big on it. They always eat lamb's heart. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I guess it's very. <laughs> um, very good for for sort of uh, what do you call it? Not calcium. Um, the other one, protein. Mm, I, I, yeah, I guess it is. But also, there's something. It's a bit like eating liver, isn't it? And mm. all that kind of stuff. It's good for you. But um, I don't know. It's not for me. I don't think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not for me. I've ripped out the hearts of my enemies in, ba- <laughs> in, in battle, um, but, you know, I wouldn't eat one. I couldn't eat a whole one. <laughs> so just be careful. <laughs> oh, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny as well. Um, um, it's, yeah, it must be around this time, but when someone goes into the fridge to get a beer without looking, is like, you see what's his face, whoever it is. Um, what's his head <laughs> yeah, what's his head <laughs> he was in there he was in the fridge what was his name did I say his name oh Dave 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 Dave, Dave. Dave. no heart Dave <laughs> <laughs> the killings uh, get more frequent now so Sylvia she gets impaled in a shower head yes! <laughs> the group go down into the mines and the miner impales a large drill into Mike and Harriet he also shoots a nail gun into Holly's head, and Howard gets his head chopped off. <laughs> there's lots of deaths, <laughs> so there's lots of screaming. Yeah, uh, they're yeah. all quite creative, though, aren't they? Like, they are, um, yeah. it just shows you with a little bit of thought. <laughs> it doesn't have to be multi-million pounds. You can just think about what you're going to do. Yeah. Buy a few heart-shaped boxes. <laughs> Uh, so who's left? Oh, the remaining four. They try and get out. Axel drowns and Patty is killed by the miner. Yeah, I feel like that the last 10, 15 minutes is purely just showing how many non-important characters they can kill off in fantastic ways. <laughs> I kind of... Fantastic I, murders and how to how to get them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got that feeling like the whole way through where... You get all these characters, but you don't really get to know them because there's no need to, because, you know, they're just going to die at some point. So I don't even know how many characters there are. It seems to be a lot, especially There's a lot at the in that party. bar. They're all like a big gang at the bar, aren't they? Yeah, more than you, more than most. There's definitely more kids in this than there is in Friday the like 13th. Yeah, I suppose it's like a village or a town and everyone hangs out in the same place, so... Yeah, and maybe they got a load of extras as well because it's just literally they could they, they all spend the t- all the people in the bar. <laughs> are yeah, probably people who would all be in the bar anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it, it's not just the kids either, is it? It's not just well, no, I say kids, like you know, all the folks and the laundrette and all yeah. Kinds of, yeah. But um, yeah, it's like what I said in our episode of Wrong Turn. Like the people who you think will die dies, and the people who you think survive survives. Damn <laughs> 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 uh, Mike. yeah anyway on to the big finale um the miner chases tj and sarah and a fight starts and due to this the miner is revealed to be axel (laughs) yeah a flashback shows the axel's father was one of the supervisors that was killed by Harry Warden, and as a child, Axel witnessed Harry Warden murdering his father and tearing his heart out, which traumatised him. TJ hits Axel with a rock, resulting in the tunnel collapsing, which traps him, 
Then Newby and the police arrive as Axel frees himself from the debris and he runs deep into the mine, laughing hysterically and swearing <laughs> yeah. revenge on the town. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Did he? Um... <laughs> Did he tear his arm off? I read somewhere that he tore his arm off. I must have. I didn't see that. Oh, uh, I read somewhere. Uh, apparently, he kind of like cut his arm off, or oh yeah, to, yeah, to, I don't know, to, so he could get out. Also, I I can't think of anybody else in a film. I could be wrong. Called Axel, other than Axel Foley, and this guy. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing I can think of is Axel Rose. <laughs> oh yeah, Axel Rose, yeah. <laughs> that famous actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but you're right. He's the only one. Axel Foley, Axel Rose, and this guy, Axel. The three mm. Axels. Yeah. Did you uh did you figure it out at all that Axel was the killer? No. Oh, no? <laughs> <laughs> no. I never figure it out. I I think even if I hmm, even if I did, I would actively try and forget because I just for me, I, I, it's part of the fun of it. Like I never, I'm never, I'm one of, like I've said to you this before. I'm not one of those people who like <laughs> wants to work it all out and be like, ha ha, I'm so clever, I know everything. Like I just <laughs> don't care. And then also, even if I did work it out on the first watch, I'd probably forget who it was on the second watch anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so every time I watch a film, it's like watching it for the first time. <laughs> Well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like um, like a virgin. <laughs> Watch for the very first time. Yeah. I thought it was a good uh, good little twist. It makes sense now I think about it because I think it was maybe mentioned once or twice that Axel's dad, he, he owned the mine or he was the boss or something of the mine. So it kind of makes sense. You know, Axel's dad was a supervisor, and we know that the supervisors were killed. So yeah. Yeah. it does all tie in. I did check that bit out. I was like, oh, it does all kind of make sense. Yeah, yeah, mm. for sure. I almost want to like rewatch it, knowing that he's the killer now, so I can like view it differently. What What is it about Axel that you think now you know? What did he do as an actor to give us clues, or did he not? I don't think he did really. Did he? I don't think he did. Because the thing that threw me off was we see him um, fighting TJ or trying to start a fight with TJ, and he's, like, blind drunk. Yeah. But was he is just it when acting it, drunk? Or? Axel sat outside crying. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. That's where I maybe had a clue. Just because in films like this, mental instability is just given a clue to it if maybe you cry. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. like, uh, she doesn't love me. Because how old are they supposed to be here? Because they're working. They're working in the mines. It's not as if they're like young kids, is it? I mean, they. I think initially it was written for younger people, mm. and then, like for different reasons, they had to age it up, mainly for actors they could get hold of. Mm. So yeah, I think that is where it falls down a little bit because they're like living the lives of almost high school kids and a lot of what how they behave is like high school kids or college kids but then they are like working young working people mm. yeah it's realistic yeah. i guess it makes sense you could leave high school in a small town and the only job available would be to work in the mine it's like one guy leaves doesn't he mm. and that's what that's why they split up and then when he comes back it's like oh look who's back you know <laughs> mr i want a different job yeah <laughs> <laughs> What a dick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Let's uh, go ahead and rate this film. So, hearts in hot dog water out of 10. Um, I'm going to... Yeah, I yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. I love finding old classic horrors, you know, or underrated horrors that I'm now watching for the for first time. Um I enjoyed the whole premise, and like I said earlier, with it being an early '80s slasher, it it definitely has that gritty feel into it, and I, I love stuff like that. So I, I was into it. I thought I think if there's anything I would change, maybe the final section, like the whole mine section at the end, could have been trimmed down a little bit. Um, if not, then maybe cut down on the amount of throwaway characters there were because more towards the end it was literally one after the other this one this one this one so 
Yeah. Um, but I like it, though. I thought it was good. Um, underrated. I may may have gone unnoticed with all the slashes at the time, maybe. I don't know. But um, I would encourage people to at least give it a try because I think it is up there with some of the other great ones. So I am going to give it a solid 7 out of 10. Hearts in hot dog water. Well, this might be a momentous occasion because I am also going to give it a 7 out of 10. Ooh. Wow, we actually agreed on something. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Stand back, guys. Stand back. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Has that shocked you? Um, <laughs> wow. I have a few... <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> I, have some, um, I have some minor problems with this film, mm. but... Um, <laughs> Weren't enough to stop me, stop me giving it seven out of ten. Um, I think it's got some very creative kills, an iconic character that people. I've seen people dress up as this character, which is always a good sign that it's, it still sticks around. Um, it gets a little dark at the end. It's got that dark Black Christmas kind of edge to it that I like. Um, and again, I guess you're right. Even though it's only an hour thirty, some some of it does drag a little bit. Mm. And that's maybe yeah. Um, it makes me want to get warm and layer up and get all nice and. I feel it's authentic the way they dressed and looked and acted. Uh, Mike's a really good character, an unusual, unusual kind of character to have in these. That's quite um, a nuanced character. Um, so yeah, seven out of ten. Let's go. Cool. All right, sweet. Let's head into some trivia. Oh, yeah. Cool. All right. I've just got a few. Um, quick one is Quentin Tarantino has named My Bloody Valentine as his all time favorite slasher. Really? Yeah. So there you go. Uh, there could have been a sequel. Um, George Mahalka approached Paramount in 2001 with a synopsis for a sequel, but they declined it due to poor box office numbers with this one. Oh. Yeah. That was 2001, so he left it quite a while. Yeah, it's not like he was just he was knocking on the door the day after that. Oh. <laughs> he was like, I'm going to leave it a good 20, 30 years, and then I'll be like, hey, I've got a great idea for a sequel. Kinda, Same characters. I'm not yeah. sure how involved in the remake he was, but that was only 2009, so it's kind of a bit of a yeah i'd imagine he would him, really. be on as like executive producer or something but not actually have anything to do with it no it seems a bit insulting really like he went there with a good sequel and they say no and then just a few years later they do a remake of it i would have much rather have seen a sequel than a remake although apparently it was a decent one but i disagree <laughs> yeah I, I i think i might have seen it but I, if it has it's washed over me so it's obviously not as good as it probably is but the fact it's 3d it just gets a no from me <laughs> yeah no that's fair enough I'm, you, you've got no argument with me i, I literally can't see <laughs> <laughs> um the identity of the killer was kept a secret from the cast because the filmmakers liked the idea of the mystery being real among the actors. I think we've we've said that before in other films, haven't we? Um, yeah. I can't remember what it was. There, there was something like that that we've done where they kept it a secret. I wouldn't be surprised if they did that in screen, but... I was just um, thinking that. Maybe. Yeah, like all, all films where they've maybe filmed a couple of different versions to keep everyone guessing because they don't trust the cast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, George Mahalka said that the shooting location at Sydney Mines, Nova Scotia, was chosen because of its rustic appearance. However, when the locals found out that a movie was going to be shot there, they decided to spend 50 grand to have the mines painted and cleaned up. This, of course, diminished uh, the reason that the production wanted the location to begin with. So Mahalka said that 75 grand of the film's budget was then used to return it back to its original state for shooting. <laughs> what a waste of time. <laughs> uh, what a waste of money. Yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all I've got. So let's I've jump. All mine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's jump into our game. game. 
Okay, so the game I've made for this week is Holiday Horrors. Ooh, okay. I've seen quite a lot of these, I think. <laughs> I would imagine you've probably seen them all. Um, but yeah, I'm going to try and describe some horror films that are based on a specific holiday or occasion, and you've got to try and guess what it is. Okay. Uh, better get my cheers and booze ready. All right, there we are. I still can't tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, number one. So, as winter break begins, a group of sorority sisters begin to receive anonymous phone calls, but no one realises just how near the culprit is. Black Christmas. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know it's the second remake of Black Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a killer is out... Uh, to avenge the death of a young girl who died after being bullied by four of her classmates. Oh. Hmm. Bullied by four of her classmates. A young... A, so, what, a dad is getting revenge? Uh, the killer is out to avenge the death of a young oh. girl. Um... By bullied by four of her classmates. That's the bit that's thrown me. Mm. I haven't uh, seen this one, but I think it's another one where it's where it's an eighties slasher is it, and is then it got prom, remade. Prom night. Yeah, yeah. that's Jamie Lee Curtis, I think. Yep, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I've not I seen it, but I know that's another one similar to this where it got it remade. It washed over me that one, and then the sequel is like Prom Night to Hello Mary Lou or something like that. <laughs> that's good um okay well if if you don't get Pop this three hello jamie lee <laughs> it's a rhyme <laughs> if you don't get this next one then no more podcast <laughs> okay. well, there's, a lot, there's a lot hanging on this question <laughs> you, you won't just disappoint me you'll disappoint yourself okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> well as, i know i'm getting it wrong <laughs> Ellie Grimbridge and Dr. Daniel Chalice. <laughs> oh, Halloween 3. Yeah. Season Invest of the Witch. Investigate strange activities with Silver Shamrock. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we still have a wee, no, no, we do. <laughs> do I still have that drop? Uh, oh, I don't. <laughs> do, 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 do. Oh, okay. Uh, next one. So... Nine college students stay at a friend's mansion over the weekend, but the pranks slowly turn deadly as friends go missing and turn up dead. Friend's mansion. Hmm. Not New Year's Evil, is it? Well, the the clue is in there. The pranks slowly turn deadly. Deadly. Uh... Don't know. Give up. Oh, you got a boo. <laughs> <laughs> that was April Fool's Day. Oh, I've got that April Fool. I have that. I own that. <laughs> I just forgot what it was about. <laughs> you own it, you've just not seen it. I have seen it. Oh. <laughs> I just can't remember. That's with Linda Blair, yeah? I do not know. <laughs> um... Okay, next one. When entrepreneur Steve, uh, Steve Christie opens a summer camp which was shut for years, a group of counsellors are killed one by one. Friday the 13th. <laughs> Creepy Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Weirdo Steve. It was actually the prequel, Thursday the 12th. Thursday the 12th. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday the 14th. That's a good film, actually. <laughs> Okay, last one. Uh, and I really want to see this. A witch cooks up trouble when she revives her dead serial killer son as a giant psychopathic baked good <laughs> intending to kill the girl who had him executed. Look at a ginger dead man. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 uh, hang on, what? When do we have, to, when do we have ginger, gingerbread? What, what? That's a Christmas what? film, isn't it? Mm, is it I don't not? know if it is. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I thought it was. I don't think it is. When I was looking wrong. for Christmas horrors, that popped up. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe you're right. Uh, I just can't remember it. I've not seen it for a long time. I've, but, not, yeah. I've not seen it, yeah, but I googled Christmas horrors and that came up. 
Fair enough. <laughs> I don't want to. I got it right anyway. Why am I arguing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go. I'm uh, doing my best ever. Three, four, five, six. Yeah. You got five out of six. Yes. You yeah. will continue to do that every time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, cool. That's it. So let's wrap up uh, next episode, 2013's The Conjuring. Because I, uh, I really want to start introducing you to the Conjuring universe. Um, There's a universe. Yeah, it's got like Annabelle, the Nun, the Curse of La La La, La Rona, La Llorona. Yeah. Oh, what what year is that? Sorry. Uh, 2013. Oh, exactly when I wouldn't, yeah, the era of films I would not be watching. But also, um, I do want to, I've, I've kind of wanted to see The Nun. So if this gets mm. me into watching The Nun, yeah, then yeah. There's plenty yeah. of them. There's a, yeah, like I said, there's a whole universe of it, The Conjuring Universe. So they're probably on like eight or nine now. So how does that work? Do they all just, like, people from the other films just pop up in uh Well, it's all about, the it's all about um, Ed and Lorraine Warren. Like every film is kind of their doing. Like, well, you'll what, see. What are they, baddies? <laughs> no, you, you know Ed and Lorraine Lauren, uh, Warren. They're the paranormal investigators. Mm. It's true stories. Well, allegedly true stories. What, the ones from that we talked about in the Amityville Horror? Uh, no. they, they did have something to do with the Amityville Horror, yeah. I think, I think The Conjuring yeah. 2, it starts off in the Amityville house. Oh, I'm so confused. Right, okay. <laughs> this should be good. You're going to have to do a lot of explaining. You've got some explaining to do. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Oh, our our poll pick. So, end of the month, we are discussing... Well, the poll pick was for Killer Dolls. And in third place, it was Megan or Mafregan. Um, no one really wanted that. Second place was Annabelle which is a part of the Conjuring universe. You'll find that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Everything's part of the Conjuring universe. Right? Yep. The one show, that's part of it. <laughs> but what came in first by a long shot was Child's Play. Ooh. Okay, cool. I haven't seen that for a long time. Yeah, that'll be a fun one. It's been a while since I've seen that as well. Yeah. I've seen the first one more than once, but I, there's loads of the sequels I have not seen. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll do that at the end of the month. And, yeah, next week will be The Conjuring. And I cannot wait to see how you receive that one. Is this one more about magic, I guess? It's a, it's all paranormal and, and, like, exorcisms and stuff like that. People getting possessed. Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. I mean, it sounds good for other people, not for me. <laughs> 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 I don't want that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, that is it. So let's head out. Peace. Peace. If you've liked today's episode, be sure to go and like us on Facebook. That's where we announce our next episodes, as well as each month doing a themed poll pick where you get to choose what you want us to watch. We like to hear from you, so please feel free to leave us a comment or send us a message, or you can even email us at allthingshorror666 at gmail.com. That's all for today. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next one. We all go a little mad sometimes.